guys, MPTV, Matt Piper, the Soccer Mentor. Hope you're well and thank you for joining us. Um, we were sitting, messing around in the gym today, as you'll see in a minute, and we thought that we'd put it out on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, make sure you do here. Uh, we put it out on Instagram. If anyone had any soccer related questions, I would do my best to answer them. Or if it was for a younger generation and you wanted to get an answer from one of the young guys here, Cairo and Brandon, you could do. So here's how it went. Like they could go to a game and then watch it and see what the manager's telling them and then take it to a coaching session or something like that and then like yeah. try and improve it. What I would say, so when I first started, I had just finished football and I had a bit of a leg up because obviously I was a footballer and a lot of people in Leicester knew that. But what I actually did, I drove around to between 200 and 300 schools um, and asked to speak to the head teacher, I went in, spoke to the head teacher, said what I had done previously and that I would love to get into coaching. Um, at the same time, I was passing my coaching badges, that's important, even if you only get your level one. I don't know what country you're coming from, but in England, to coach, you really need a level one, just so you know um, distances, markers, um, they give you some good ideas on what you could start doing when you start coaching. Um, and it gives you a good basis to build from when you try and go out to coach. But what Brandon said is actually true. What I would do if I was you, I would go to a club, freelance, don't ask for payment at the start, and I would speak to <coughs> the, the managers and I would speak to the coaches <coughs> and just say, can I watch you? Can I shadow you? Can I, can I pick some tips up from you? Can I go out and do some scouting? Totally free of charge. And that's how you're gonna build up uh, a, a syllabus of people that you'll be able to call on and they'll call you for favours and then all of a sudden you've got five, six, seven people that you can call on and they can call you to ask you to go and do things for them, to go and watch matches, um, to take a training session if they can't make it um, and that is what I would suggest. That is, that is how I did it and I think that's probably the best way to do it. You can't ask for payment at the start, you're inexperienced um, so I would go out and I would work for free to gain the experience I need to push on in football. And then as you, as you get better and as you get more experience, you're going to get more jobs coming in and that is what I would suggest. It's a great question. Dream Chasers, I see you. Um, I featured Dream Chase in one of my videos recently, really good channel, if you've not yet, go and check him out. Um, Dream Chasers, spot on. That is exactly what happens with, with most pros that I know. I did it, unfortunately. Um, you work so hard, day in, day out, since I was eight years old, to become a professional footballer. Got there, started playing for the first team, and then you sort of, it's hard because it's peer pressure. I was only 19 when I got in the first team you start to copy what the other pros are doing. So the established pros in the team, they come, um, we all have breakfast together, they have a laugh in the morning, we get our boots on, we go out, we train, they finish, boom, they're gone. In town, shopping, um, going, going for lunch with their wives, going to play golf, everything like that, everything but football. And because you're doing football every day, I do understand why a lot of footballers do that. You just want to get away so you can clear your head of football and um, relax and have downtime. So I understand why players do it, but the players that work constantly on their game, even when they've made it, so they stay behind after training, they practice their free kicks, crosses, shooting, everything. I played with a couple of players that did that. They are ultimately um, 
the guys that are putting in consistent performances week in, week out. So if I had my time again and I didn't get injured, I would definitely be working after training. And the other thing is, if you've got a couple of guys in the team that are very vocal and um, some of the big characters in the team, they tend to put you down if you do that. The word in England for it is busy. Look at him staying after training, he's busy. That's busy. Um, so when you're a young player especially, you don't want to be called busy, so that's why a lot of young players don't do it. But to further your career and then to improve as a footballer, I would suggest you do do it. If you ever made it, I would keep constantly working. Look at the likes of David Beckham. How many goals did I score in my career? Hmm, there's so many, let me think. One. No, I scored one Premier League goal, here it is. And that's why you constantly see it on my channel. I feature it quite a lot because when you've only scored one Premier League goal you, you, and you've had a short career because of injuries, you kind of have to live off it for the rest of your life. Um, but yeah, I scored four professional goals. I, when I was a really young youth team in, at Leicester City, I was 18 years old, I went out on loan to a lower league side called Mansfield and I scored three, <coughs> three league goals for them. And, but in the Premier League, I only scored one goal. What you don't want to do in a trial is chase every ball. The, the coach or the manager who, who's put on the trial will think, he's a good player but he just runs around every, everywhere, he don't seem to understand what he's doing. So, uh, a real good piece of advice guys, and, a, and, a, and an older pro told me this when I first got into the team, because I used to sort of run everywhere because you want everyone to think, look how hard he's working. But what's important, especially in high level games, so you're playing against and with good players, is you want to get into the correct positions early. Uh, and Brandon's, I've told this to Brandon a lot of the time, he don't listen to me because I'm his dad, but in games, what Brandon tends to do is just run everywhere. So run over there, then he run over there, then he run over there. And what he's not doing is conserving energy because your second part of the question was actually correct what you said. You wanna conserve energy, especially if you're a winger or a guy, when he gets the ball, you need a lot of energy to be able to do your tricks and run at people. So what I tell Brandon and what I'm telling you, you need to get into position early. So what I mean by that is, when the other team are attacking, I would sprint back to the position my manager wants me in to defend so I see the position early but as soon as I get there that's when I take my rest. So if I'm marking Cairo I want to get to him early, I don't want to have to keep jogging all over where he's going, I want to get to him early and then I want to stay on him, I want to stick to him like a shadow and stay with him and that way then I'm conserving energy. All right, you don't just want to keep running around everywhere. You want to get into the positions, especially defending positions, early and then take your breather once you're there. Because you know if something happens quick and they counter-attack you, you're already in the position to be able to defend. You don't want to be after sprinting. What a lot of players do, Riyad Mahrez at Leicester City does it a lot. He leaves it, he leaves it, he leaves it. So he's 15 yards off his man, he leaves it and then his man gets the ball. And then he has to sprint to get to that ball. What you want to do is be there early. So when he does get the ball, you're already in position. Good question. Um, I look at people like Aspel Equator at Chelsea is a wonderful fullback. He's been playing centre back recently, but a wonderful fullback. And um, I think you need to have high energy, especially high energy, because nowadays a modern fullback has got to attack as well as a winger, and he's got to be able to defend as well. So he's got to be up and down the pitch. I think it's one of the most de demanding positions on the football pitch. So the one that jumps out at me straight away is high energy. You need to be able to defend. And nowadays you need to be able to cross the ball like a winger, so great quality once you're on the ball. And you need, obviously you need to be a great defender. You, you need to be able to, to snuff out any danger that the wide man will bring. And I used to play right wing back in the Premier League toughest position I ever played because if you come up against a tricky winger 
and you've just gone on a run yourself because you're trying to be a modern day fullback, you have to be so fit because then you've got to get back and you've got to defend and you're on your toes all the time and someone's trying to do step overs. Imagine going on a 50, 60 yard run to help support your team. You get a crossing, the keeper catches it and throws it out to someone like Eden Hazard who's out on the left wing and you're, and you're right back. You've got to run back and defend against him. So one of, the, one of the most important things in that area, I believe nowadays, is you've got to be one of the fittest players in the team. Guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got something from it. I hope we... Did you answer any questions? One. You answered one question. Cara, did you answer any questions? I hope I answered the questions to a satisfactory um, level and let me know in the comments below. Let us know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video because I, I've enjoyed doing it. I like um, answering your questions in a live format like this. The video was probably a little bit longer, um, so next time I'll tr probably try and speed it up a little bit. So just let me know below if you enjoyed this video and if you want any questions answered, guys, put them in this video, put them in the comments in this video. Pop over to my Instagram, I don't know if I've said yet, but if you're not already following me, <laughs> follow me here. Yeah. And guys, thank you for watching as always. Hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you again very soon. Hey, hey.